So I noticed that MKUSB seemed pretty popular among several people who kind of know what they're doing. It's a tool to create boot, boot drives. Now I noticed the license here is um, Creative Commons Attribution. So I should be able to read this okay. All right, it says that it's simple, safe, and reliable. That's MKUSB. It's a simple, safe tool to create a bootable drive from an ISO image or a compressed image file. The bootable drive is a mass storage device, a USB drive, an internal drive, or an eSATA drive. The tool provides a safe front end to select the correct origin file and destination drive to prevent mistakes that might overwrite the wrong drive. It uses DD under the hood. Tutorial See MKUSB in action. Here are several quite good recent MKUSB walkthrough video tutorials. The problem is I noticed the video tutorials were silent. So here I have audio that may help some people. All right, so for the quick start, enable the universe pocket of the Ubuntu repositories. Some flavors of uh, Ubuntu already have this enabled. Running this command won't cause any harm to those flavors. So sudo add-apt-repository space universe. Add the MKUSB PPA. Now they put this down as unstable here. So um, you might want to cross that off. Um, so actually, and then it says install the MKUSB packages from the PPA. And it has these things. But let's glance at the quick start manual for this. Also, actually, um, if I go to Calvin BY's guide here, if you go down, you notice he has the pseudo adapt repository universe also, but he has pseudo adapt repository PPA colon MK, MKUSB forward slash PPA. And that's not the unstable. And then he does the pseudo apt-get update and pseudo apt-get install MKUSB. And for the command line version, it would be sudo apt-get install uh, mkusb-nox. So if we look at the quick start guide, um, it says, uh, and they use this interesting pitchfork looking symbol, uh, prepare for mkusb, drives alias mass storage devices. You need two drives or mass storage devices, pen drive, flash card, HDD, SSD. The minimum sizes are two gigabytes and eight gigabytes. But obviously the final operating system, system will soon need more space for your personal files as well for additional system files, program packages, a drive for the installer, at least as big as the ISO file for cloning. So minimum two gigabytes for Ubuntu server, four gigabytes for standard, standard Ubuntu desktop, and the Ubuntu family flavors for a live-only system. I'll mention other Linux distros in a minute. And eight gigabytes or more for a persistent live system, typically a USB pen drive, but a memory card or an external SSD will also work. A drive for the target. The final installed operating system, typically an internal drive, but it could also be connected via USB, eSATA, or a card reader. Uh, so that probably includes the Raspberry Pi stuff, I would think. Minimum 8 gigabytes for El Ubuntu, but 16 gigabytes or more is better. The standard Ubuntu desktop with a lot of snaps needs at least 32 gigabytes backup. 
back up all personal data before trying this method because the installer drive and maybe also the target drive will be completely overwritten. Tough guys never back up their data. They do their work twice instead. So that's a joke that they put in there because <laughs> who wants to do the work twice, right? All right, install or download MKUSB. Install or download the shell script MKUSB and download the operating system as a hybrid ISO file or compressed image file. MKUSB can be installed from PPA with the following commands. See, now this one has sudo add apt repository ppa colon mkusb forward slash ppa and press enter. So this is the one that was on um, Mr. Calvin Bowie's page. Then uh, sudo apt-get update, sudo apt-get install mkusb, sudo apt-get install USB dash pack dash EFI for persistent live drives. Installing via PPA is the easy way to install and keep MKUSB up to date automatically. Uh, now here it is. For distros outside the Ubuntu family, MKUSB can be downloaded, installed starting by downloading from HTTPS phillw dot net forward slash isos forward slash linux dash tools forward slash mkusb or the github for uh, sudo dust which is the guy who um, I think the main maintainer is sudo dust and the github is here tarballs I'll link the github for that for you under the video. And download a tarball to be used according to instructions at the following pages. They give Ubuntu pages, but if you look at the bottom down here, um, he gives directions to install via the tarball, you know, extracting the contents. Um, and there's an installer shell script that can install and remove it. Um, and he gives links to instructions at the Ubuntu community. Okay. These instructions install MKUSB-DUS and or MKUSB-PLUG plug with a graphical user interface plus text user interfaces to be used with text screens and in terminal windows. They are most likely to work in Debian and Linux distros based on Ubuntu and Debian. With distros that are more different, cloning is likely to work, but not creating persistent live drives. Okay. Files and checksums. Current Ubuntu, Debian, and many other Linux ISO, ISO files can be used, including the mini ISO files except the mini ISO of 12.04 LTS. Image files and compressed image files can also be used, like file.iso, file.img, file.img.gz, and file.img.xz are all forms that look like they'll be acceptable. Windows 7 through 10 ISO files, like windows.iso. Download also the corresponding checksum files, usually md5sum. And then you can see the following links at the help.ubuntu and fillw.net ISOs. Uh, we're at fillw.net right now, actually. Check, download, and clone image in Linux. Change directory to where you have the download files. Check that the download was successful with MD5SUM. For example, uh, you do md5sum space and then put the complete name of the ISO. That'll give you the number and then you can just visually compare the numbers. That's the manual way. Use MKUSB to install Clone Flash, the operating system. MKUSB helps you find the correct target drive and avoid the risk with DD. 
Um, I'm reading this because I was meaning to read this anyway, and I might as well put it on the video so other people could listen to it while they're doing other things. If installed, or if it helps you to listen to it while you read it. If installed, MKUSB is in the system path and can be started. From the menu, menu, system, MKUSB. Start from the menu in many distros. Hey, let's, let's back up and let's actually do this thing. So um, the sudo add apt repository command, we'll just put that in terminal and do it. See, that's uh, something that you don't necessarily um, get in there. Hopefully, I put in the past. Press enter to continue. Whoosh. Uh, US archive Ubuntu.com. Okay, so it's done. Let's go back to that guide. So let's see, he does sudo apt-get update. Come on, let me uh, highlight it. Control, well, here, let's right-click copy. Control C is copy, Control V is paste. Since we already sudoed here, it let us do it. Then um, let's sudo app get install mkusb. So as a security thing, every new thing like this you install um, increases your security risks. Just keep that in mind. Overall, we want to install the minimum amount of um, software on our system. What command did I use for this? MKUSB, okay. That's probably almost done. Yep. So now um, let's install the EFI to make persistent drives. Um, sudo apt auto remove uh oh what did I just hope I didn't mess anything up there haha -ha. okay um, so we installed those now if I go down here Menu system MKUSB. So maybe we can go here and type MK. There it is, MKUSB. USB version DUS. Answer yes. Answer no to select. All right, let's just press yes. All right, well, um, here, let me pause this a second. Okay, I entered the password. The target device, so, and here's the screen that you get. So we'll quit.
All right. So that works. You can we can search for it. Um or in Dash or similar tools to select installed application programs. It can also be started from a terminal window or text screen with MKUSB. So let's try that. MKUSB. And now let's see if Control C will get us out. Yep. Okay. It works. Um, so you can do MKUSB with the file name. Uh, you can do MKUSB quote with the path to file. If downloaded, make MKUSB executable. Pseudo chmod ugo plus x space mkusb. Star mkusb from activities in GNOME or dash in Unity. And we just did that. I just went up here and typed mk. And there it, it showed up just like... Um, just like they show here. Start MKUSB in a terminal window. We sh I showed you that. I did that. Start MKUSB via SSH in text mode. Shortcut, type DUS to get directly to MKUSB version 12. Oh, pseudo dust, that guy's name. More details. The current version of MKUSB uses a text-based console and graphical windows to help you select the correct source file and target device. MKUSB can monitor the data itself with PV and suggest that you install it if not yet installed. PV shows MIBI bytes and DD shows megabytes. MKUSB needs a number of help programs and suggest that you install them. If you cannot install some of these help programs, you should install DUS or MKUSB NOX or MKUSB BAS available at this link. MKUSB is described with more details at the wiki page. If you have installed MKUSB from the PPA, it will be updated together with other installed programs and there are manual pages for MKUSB and MKUSB Knox. Let's check that. So first, man, well first let's clear. Then we do man MKUSB. Okay, and we do get the manual here for that. I don't know, maybe we'll read this sometime. Um, Q to quit. And let's try man mkusb-nox. Okay, and you see here mkusb Knox shows up. Very good, so that works. Slideshow. All right, if I go to slideshow, it says 404 not found, so that's a bad link. This manual was made for MKUSB version 12, alias DUS, with the GUI, GUI DUS. In order to get a view of MKUSB version 11, you can watch the slideshow, which is not there anymore. The quick choice, yes, continues with the same version of MKUSB. You can select MKUSB DUS or MKUSB 11 in another window after the installer no. Hey, isn't this the Unity desktop over here? Um, answer no to select another version. All right, I guess when you answer no, that'll be MKUSB 11. What the difference is between DUS and 11? I guess DUS is 12. Okay. Welcome and notice about overriding. Um, MKUSB console X term. So here you select what to do, install, backup, restore, wipe. While I is install, make a boot device, S, restore to a standard storage device, 
W wipe a drive, B back up persistent live home, R restore persistent live home, A about, Q quit exit from DUS. Select which kind of installation you want to make. C is cloning an ISO file, compressed image file or device. L is live only or Linux installer from ISO file. P is persistent live. That's generally only Debian and Ubuntu. W is extracting Windows installer and Q for quit. From an MKUSB persistent live drive, you can use the partition with the image of the ISO file as source. Let's see. MKUSB, use the partition with the ISO partition not found. Quick choice possible. Answer no if you intend to install to the dr drive with dev sda4. Extreme, flash blue, extreme, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to install from the device from an MKUSB persistent? You can use the partition with the image of the ISO file as source. I don't know if that's understandable. I hope they give a better explanation. Normally, you will select a source file, ISO file, or compressed image file. Select which files to see here with a filter. It makes it easier to find the source files. Well, let's see. That's .i. Well, okay. Select target device, USB pen drive, memory card, HDD, SSD. There will be an extra warning if you select an HHD or, I mean, HDD or SSD. Target would be where it's going. Please double check that you have selected the correct target device and go when you are sure. So you clone from the source and you go to a target device. Please double check that you've selected the correct target device and go when you are sure. Um, name, size, model, clone from an ISO file. Mm, check for done with the smiley face. Check the details if you wish. Uh, Q is the quit option. You can make the console window larger and you can scroll with the scroll bar. Middle click and drag scroll wheel or two fingers. Press the enter key to finish from the console window. Persistent live system 1 parentheses 3. See details, help Ubuntu.com community make USB persistent. Let's glance at that. Okay, maybe we'll glance at that in a second. Select persistent drive. Select settings. Select space for persistence, percent. Persistent live system, two, three. Check for done. Check the details if you wish. You can make the console window larger. You can scroll with the scroll bar. Middle click and drag. Scroll wheel or two fingers. Persistent live system 3.3 advantages. The persistent live system works with all current Ubuntu flavor desktop files. Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Lubuntu, Xubuntu, Dot, 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 you know, so I guess that's star Ubuntu. And with Linux Mint, Tori OS, and several other distros respins based on Ubuntu and Debian Jesse. Very safe, minimal risk to overwrite the wrong drive by mistake. It's easy to use. The target drive with the persistent live system works in almost all PC, Intel, and AMD computers. Disadvantages. 
but live-only pen drives made with MKUSB work in these cases. USB Pack EFI does not work at all in secure mode. That's UEFI's secure mode. And the boot system based on a 64-bit ISO file does not boot in 32-bit computers. Uh, does not work with Linux distros that are not based on Ubuntu. Maybe you can tweak the grub.cfg file and make it work. Does not work with non-desktop ISO files, for example, the Ubuntu mini.iso or the Ubuntu server. Remember that most of the time it is enough with a live-only USB pen drive and only a waste of effort to create a persistent live system. Hmm. I don't know. Persistent live systems are pretty cool. All right. Wipe the first megabyte. That's M-I-B-I -I byte. If you want to reuse a USB device that has been used with an ISO file system, ISO 9660, you should wipe the first megabyte, actually MIBI byte, with DD, overwrite with zeros. Otherwise, Grub install and some partitioning tools don't want to write into the head of the drive because they see the CD file system and are confused. You need not wipe the drive before cloning or restoring with MKUSB. It will be done automatically. So the, in the dust 12.0.0, 1, wipe 1, the first MIBI byte. Restore to a standard storage device. S, restore to a standard store device, storage device. Enter label for the FAT32 system. It'll be FAT32, I guess. Manage persistent live system. Back up and restore the slash home directory in an Ubuntu Casper-RW partition. Upgrade persistent live system. Restore works to another persistent live drive made from a current daily ISO file and also to another version of Ubuntu. So you can upgrade or downgrade your persistent live system. Use MKUSB to create a new system from another, typically newer ISO file, and restore from the backup to this other persistent live system. I don't know, that sounds a little confusing. Backup persistent live home. So that's the letter B, Backup Persistent Live Home. Uh, okay. Backup Persistent Live Home in Casper-RW. Restore Persistent Live Home. That's R. You go to that document and you click Yes to restore it. Uh, okay, let me... Pause this just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, references. See the tutorials in the Ubuntu forums and YouTube for more detail. Yeah, my only thing about the Ubuntu one that I saw was that it was um, silent. And so that is not exactly much good. And the slideshow is, gets, gives a 404, so that doesn't work. Uh, let's see, should I read the persistent live system section? Most of the time it is enough with a live only USB pen drive and only a waste of effort to create a persistent live system. The cloning method of MKUSB is very reliable and works with most Linux distros. It needs hybrid ISO files, but sometimes it is better to have a persistent live system. And beginning with version 10, MKUSB can create such systems. So the version 10 and 11, that's the L, persistent live selected. Version 12, 
P, persistent live, only Debian and Ubuntu. That's MK version 12 DUS. So persistent live system, P, select persistent live. Uh, selected settings, select space for persistence, percent. Method developed from grub-n-iso. This persistent live system is developed from booting via grub and the ISO file grub and ISO by Andre Andre Rodovalho, described in one pen drive for all PC computers, single boot, dual boot, multi boot. Well, that's kind of interesting. How to create EFI UEFI Grub2 multi boot USB drive to boot ISO images. Yeah, maybe I'll read that separately. All right, uh, the same pen drive can boot in UEFI mode and BIOS mode with a 32-bit operating system. Today, 64-bit operating systems can boot almost all, except the oldest computers. But this persistent live system cannot boot with secure boot. Data from USB pack underscore EFI dot tar dot GZ are used to boot cloning the head end of the drive using grub.img. The program package grub.pc cannot be used in installed systems running in UEFI mode. This means that the BIOS bootloader cannot be installed with the grub install program. Instead, a compressed image file was made from a system created where it was possible, grub.img.exe. This image contains the first MIBI byte of the drive, plus the BIOS underscore grub and the USB boot partitions. The USB boot partition is also an EFI partition for booting in UEFI mode. This feature is introduced in MKUSB version 12.2.7, and some details are described at this link using data from the source ISO file. The grub boot system can be copied from an AMD64 ISO file. It can be modified slightly to make a menu entry for persistence and a point to another partition. This works with the AMD64 64-bit systems based on Ubuntu, also with secure boot. Persistent live systems made with this method boot in UEFI mode and can be made to boot in BIOS mode. If the program Grub install for BIOS is available, and it is except in installed systems running in UEFI mode, where the package Grub PC cannot be installed without conflict with existing EFI Grub packages. So this method provides a tool the make persistent live systems in UEFI mode and for UEFI mode for AMD64 systems. In a live or persistent live system, it is always possible to install Grub PC, so it is possible, possible to create systems that boot also in BIOS mode from a persistent live system running in UEFI mode. Um, compressed image file with a persistent live system. I'm going to skip that. Small 9W systems with GUI DUS alias make USB dash DUS and GParted installed. I'll skip that. Uh, X Ubuntu core with MKUSB. Hmm. Uh, MKUSB 12.5.0 makes a nice grub menu. Mm, link to MKUSB page about Nopix. The following link describes how to make a Nopix system with MKUSB. Well, that's kind of a cool idea. All right, partitions. When you select persistent, 
MKUSB creates a partition for persistence in the target drive and the target system can use it automatically. It creates totally five partitions automatically for you. In a separate menu window, you can choose between a GUID partition table, GPT, and an old-style MS-DOS partition table. Normally, GPT is recommended, and it works with huge drives, like, uh, like greater than 2 terabytes. But many HP computers need an MS-DOS partition table to boot directly from USB. The first partition labeled USB data is actually located at the end of the drive, but it has number one because several Windows versions will only read the first partition of the partition table on USB drives. This partition has an NTFS file system and can be used both when connected to a computer running Linux and Windows, so it is suitable for transfer of files as well as a common storage. The second partition is used to store program code for the Grub BIOS bootloader of a GUID partition table, GPT, and as an extended partition, a container for logical partitions if an MS-DOS partition table. The persistent live drive boots from the third partition with a FAT32 alias VFAT file system. The operating system is cloned from the ISO file to the fourth partition. The fifth partition with an EXT4 file system stores the overlay data for persistence. So one, partition NTFS, USB data for storage and transfer of files. Partition GPT, BIOS underscore grub flag for booting in BIOS mode. MS-DOS extended partition. Partition FAT32, boot partition. Partition ISO 9660, cloned ISO file. And partition EXT4, Casper RW or Live RW or Persistence. Comparison with Live Only Systems. Otherwise, when you select Live Only MKUSB clones, the IS, ISO file, and there will be no persistence. Except with some open SUSE ISO files that make persistent live systems as cloned. This kind of cloned system with an Ubuntu 64-bit operating system can boot also in secure mode. Um, advantages. Works with all current Ubuntu flavor desktop files. That's X Ubuntu, you know, where X could be anything. And with Linux Mint, LXLE, Tori OS, several other distros respins based on Ubuntu and with Debian Jesse. It's very safe, minimal risk to overwrite the wrong drive by mistake. It's easy to use. The target drive with a persistent live system works in almost all PC Intel AMD computers. The disadvantages are it works, but it's less flexible in installed systems running in UEFI mode. It can't make a system that works in 32-bit as well as with secure boot with Ubuntu family ISO files but it works with LXLE and Bode Linux. Does not work with Linux distros that are not based on Ubuntu Debian. Maybe you can tweak the grub.cfg file and make it work. Does not work with non-desktop ISO files, for example, the Ubuntu Mini ISO or the Ubuntu server. In some computers, for example, middle-aged HP desktop and laptop computers, Tori OS can boot only with a cloned live-only pen drive and with the system of method 3 from the compressed image file. Alternatives, UNet Bootin and the Ubuntu Startup Disk Creator, alias USB Creator 0.2.x can also be used when you want persistence in the target drive. They create and use a Casper-RW file with a maximum size of 4 gigabytes due to the file system FAT32. But USB Creator version 0.3.2 in Xenial Xeris 
is cloning like MKUSB makes live-only drives. Persistence works with an EX2-3 or EXT4 partition with the label Casper-RW. And that partition can be anywhere, in another pen drive or in an internal drive, which makes it faster. Persistence with an EXT partition anywhere works when booting from a DVD as well as from a cloned ISO file from a pen drive made by MKUSB. Just add the boot option persistent when you want persistence. Then the live system will search for a Casper-RW file or Casper-RW partition. Debian Jesse uses the partition label of, of, or file name persistence and Tori OS uses live-rw instead of casper-rw and this is managed by MKUSB. You can also create home-rw partition to store the content of your home directory and it will survive even if the system modifications are damaged in the Casper RW partition. Download and install automatically can break per per persistent live media. Look at the persistent live Ubuntu 1604 LTS system. Software and updates screen. Update notice that automatic updates is set to download and install automatically alias unattended upgrades. This can create severe problems in a persistent live system. After leaving the persistent live Ubuntu LTS system running overnight, it had performed an automatic upgrade. DF revealed that the content in Casper RW had increased to 1.6 gigabyte. In a fresh system with an almost empty Casper RW partition. Discussion. If not enough space and inodes in the Casper RW partition or file, the upgrade operation will be incomplete and fail. There might be big problems, even if there is space left in Casper RW. Finally, it is wasting the available space. If you have a small Casper RW partition or Casper RW file, this is caused by a change of the default action. When there are security updates, a survey indicates that this default setting is different between the flavors and versions of Ubuntu. Lubuntu keeps the setting display immediately, while the other tested flavors change it from 1404 LTS to 1604. Select display immediately if your flavor and version is affected. Solution for ISO, I'm skipping stuff now, for ISO file versions that are affected. Um, backup and restore persistent overlay data. The partition that stores persistent overlay data is easily damaged, particularly if you remove the pen drive before it is unmounted. Update and upgrade. It's a good idea to use persistence to add functionality by installing packages and tweak the system to what you like. Common experience, but it is a bad idea to update, upgrade a persistent live system continuously. Then you'll soon get a bort system according to the experience of several people. Test with update and full upgrade. I have tested and have I'm still protesting, per, <laughs> protesting, testing a persistent live Lubuntu 1604.1 LTS in a 60 gigabyte SSD. Compared to a USB pen drive, the SSD is fast, big, and reliable. It was possible to update and upgrade it to be to up to date in June 2018 which is almost two years after the ISO file was released, and the system worked after several reboots and installation of new program packages. Pseudo apt update, pseudo apt full upgrade. App full upgrade throws errors because of crypt setup and affecting the installer ubiquity too. But these are not affecting the way I use the persistent live drive, for example. I can still install new program packages into the persistent live system. 
I tested it today, and I can install Ubuntu 1604 from the Persistent Live system, so Ubiquity is still working. It's always possible to select Try Lubuntu or Install Lubuntu when booting and run live only. In order to install with or without encrypted disk alias LVM with Lux encryption. DF-H reports 1.9 gigabytes used space in Casper RW partition. Um, there are reason to use a current kernel and its hardware drivers. A persistent live system will only use the kernel from the ISO file. So start from a current ISO file for this purpose too. Home directory survives. If when the persistence no longer works, you may need to start all over again by removing what has been stored. Often you can keep the overlay copy of the home directory and delete all other subdirectories of your overlay system in the Casper RW partition. Delete while running it live only. This will save many settings, tweaks, and personal files, but you must reinstall the program packages that have been added. All right, back up and restore the whole Casper RW partition. I'm not going to read that. Back up and restore the home directory in a Casper RW partition. Not going to read that. Installing using the install icon on the desktop. All right, skipping that. All right, and uh, back to the MKUSB. Uh, normally, you want to keep an installed. This should be an, not and. Up to date automatically via GUI application or the following command lines. sudo apt update, sudo apt full upgrade. Then all installed packages from standard re repositories and PPAs, so also MKUSB will be upgraded. That's sudo apt update date and sudo apt full upgrade. But a live only or persistent live system can be damaged by such general updates and upgrades. Instead, it is recommended to keep most program packages as they are and only upgrade packages when really necessary. The following command line works when you want to update and upgrade the program packages that belong to MKUSB without affecting other program packages. You do sudo apt update and then sudo apt install MKUSB. You can use MKUSB with an option and with a source file as parameter, like MKUSB file.iso. Uh, there are more details in man space mkusb um, autoclone it's possible to auto start the shell script autoclone in a persistent live drive with lubuntu and mkusb to install an operating system automatically which is convenient if you maintain several operating systems at different places. Autoclone is replacing the interactive shell script DUS alias MKUSB DUS and calls the executing shell script DUS live. See the following link. Software features. MKUSB is a flexible set of tools. You can treat the collection as a single guided application, or you can call subordinate scripts directly or you can let MKUSB choose for you. Like MKUSB, MKUSB-DUS, MKUSB file.iso. MKUSB DUS is for graphical environments. MKUSB-NOX is for not servers and shell environments. MKUSB-MIN is the smallest safety belt over DD. That's useful for simple installs. MKUSB BAS, when nothing else works. There are some commands in MKUSB, MKUSB NOX, and MKUSB MIN which are not available in old or very small Linux distros. For example, Wary Puppy, a simple version based on 7. 
point four is made for such cases. That's dash MKUSB dash BAS. See this PDF manual. Additional feature MKUSB dash plug. That's a bash shell script that wraps a graphical user interface around these things listed here. See details at forward slash plug. Um, additional feature MKUSB dash XSCL which is a bash shell script that ra wraps the graphical user interface around Zorizo DD target. It can help you manage all the options and save the settings that work best for you. See details at forward slash XSCL. Is Thunar cluttering your duck desktop? Installation MKUSB releases. Ubuntu, Ubuntu users, users should use the quick start section at the top of the page. Debian, how to install PPA manually. Other Linux distros, description of the method and the tool. Um, all right, I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to, I'll copy the links to these references that I used. Thank you for listening.